I'm going to go through some of our notes here as I fill these in. You can pause your video at the moment that I type it in so that way you can pause or that way you, after you pause the video, you should be filling in the notes. So make sure that you do that so that way you don't miss out on what I have to say instead of just focusing on just typing. First of all, there's this word scarcity that is the foundation of economics here and, and what we're going to be talking about. And the basics of scarcity states that there are not enough resources to produce all the goods and services that people want. In other words, there's only so much out there. People only have so much money and you can't always get what you want. Quote from a famous song from way before your time. Some of you might have heard of it, but that's the idea here is that you people can't get everything that they want. And the idea that, that you can't get everything that you want is called scarcity. There's only a certain amount of resources or money out there. Because we don't have unlimited money or resources, we have to make choices. And that's the key part of economics of what I want to drive home here is that we can't have everything that we want, whether it's an individual, a business, a country. And therefore, because we can't have everything, we have to make choices about what we buy and what we grow, what we sell, what we trade. And that ties into this next vocabulary word, which is called opportunity cost, which is the cost of choosing one decision over the other. You can pause your video and catch up if you need to. But here, the cost of choosing one decision over the other. Let me give you an example. A little over a year ago, it was a, Janu it was a Saturday in January. And unfortunately for me, I had three really important things all on the same day. I was the teacher for Future City. And I the, the date of the state competition was on the same day that I had to coach a boys basketball game. So I was coaching seventh grade last year, which was also on the same day as my son Matthew's first ever basketball game, kindergarten basketball. And these three things were all very important in, for different reasons. And I had to choose. I had to decide which of these three things am I going to go to. And a lot of it depends on, on how needed I was and – how important I was to whatever was going on. Could someone uh, back me up, basically? And because I could find the other basketball coach to back me up and coach my game, and my wife was taking my son to the basketball game, and I looked at it as it kind of stunk that I would potentially have to miss his first ever game, but I knew in the long run I'm going to be watching many, many games. The Future City competition – was something that I didn't really have a backup person for. So as I just had to make this decision, that's how I came to that decision. I chose to go down to Columbus and I could only look at my son's game through pictures and I could only hear about my team's basketball game. So it was a very difficult decision that I really wish I didn't have to make. I would have loved to do all three, but there's not three of me, so I couldn't do that. Now, this ties into opportunity cost because – what that means is what opportunity did you lose by making whatever choice you made? For me, the choice I made was to go to the competition in Columbus, Future City. What it cost me, it cost me missing out on my team's final, coaching my team's final game. And it cost me on missing the memory of watching my son's first ever basketball game. So those things, that was the cost didn't really cost me money to do that, but these, these were opportunities. And sometimes opportunity cost is just money, but other times it's, it's simply just about opportunity that you missed out on. Now, as we get to this next vocab term, this was in your Quizlet, import. This is buying natural resources or products from other countries. The key part of that import, it sounds like in, import, import. Think of something incoming. It's coming in to your country. And you're getting a manufactured good at a lower price. Think about people using different countries like China, 
to make products that because their labor is much cheaper. They, they don't really pay their workers that much money compared to the United States. So therefore, the product ends up costing less, which is why people import different goods because it's cheaper. That's the main reason why Apple uses people in factories to assemble iPhones. If you got an iPhone on you, you're probably going to pause your video right now and you can look and you'll see on the back it says assembled in China. And we know that many, many things are made and assembled in China. Another reason why you would import something is that because that natural resource is not available whoops, in your own country. And this could be because of your weather and your tropic, you know, if, if someone places more tropical, then they can grow things that you just can't. The next fill in here is export. So we have import and export. Import, things coming in. Export, think of the word exit, things leaving. So this is when you make something in your country and you're selling it to other countries, whether you're a business or a country. Two main reasons why we export goods. One is that you have more of an item than you need. Like if you're growing 10 million bananas and your country only eats 2 million bananas, then you have 8 million to sell to somewhere else because you don't want to just let them rot. You want to make some money off of it. And another reason is if you can make more money by selling to foreign nations. You can make more money by selling it to other countries then you're going to be exporting your goods because if you can make more money, then people are going to do whatever it takes to, to, to get there. So key thing with import, things coming in, import, in, sounds like in. Export has that EX for exit on its way out. So import are things going out. Export are things coming in. There's this keyword called specialization. And this is when countries focus on certain areas or businesses focus on certain areas that you are good at. In other words, depending on your weather and climate and the number of people that you have and, and whatever other factors go into it, what, what kind of natural resources you have available to you, you're going to specialize or focus on certain areas and making certain kinds of products. So China grows rice, Mexico grows bananas, Middle East sells oil. Industry is production of goods and services. Some examples of industries. We have agricultural, which is farming, growing crops, fruits, veggies. We have the mining industry, people digging and getting out what they need there. Manufacturing is building assembly of natural resources into a finished product. And then you also have the shipping industry. Make sure you pause these things so you can get this typed in. There's this fancy word called interdependence. Interdependence is the idea that many countries in our world rely on each other for trading and receiving different goods or services. We depend on one another. So in other words, we're, all these countries, they have to end up working together. To summarize, people want all kinds of items, but a country can only grow or produce or manufacture certain kinds. Therefore, countries focus on certain areas that they are good at, and when they focus, this is called specialization. Specialization, countries can trade with one another, and this is called global trade or independence. And I'll add one more thing up here that I forgot to. We can't have everything, so we have to make choices. All right, please uh, rewind if you need to to fill in your notes, but hopefully that should give you a good foundation of economics.